Good evening, everyone. I'm Molly. I'm the executive director here at the RAL National Association. I'm here with Vern Harris. Vern has been a partner with us at the RAL National Association for a couple of years now. He's known Gene and the team for even longer than that, I'm sure. And he's going to be joining us tonight to talk about their um, RAL lease options. And that's actually their website you'll see at the end and all of the options that they've come up with in working in this space over the last, I'm sure, however many years he's gonna share with you today. So if you have questions throughout the presentation, please use the questions tab. It's over on the right-hand side in your control panel. And if you have technical difficulties, I'll try and work them out there with you throughout the presentation. Otherwise, please remember that I'm going to send you the recording tomorrow. Um, I am also going to save questions till the end. So if you have questions for Vern specifically, we will go and answer those at the very end. So Vern, if you could wait in like a couple of slides and just say, hey, I'm getting ready to wrap up. If anybody had questions up until now, then I'll give them some time to type those in. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us. This is a very popular webinar. So I will let you go ahead and take things over from now, Vern. Thanks, Molly, I appreciate it. So uh, our presentation today is building your three pack with the easy button. I like to call us the easy button uh, and I'll show you why. Everybody knows uh, that's attending that uh, Gene preaches that you should have at least three. And from what I've seen with the numbers that makes the most sense. Uh, three is the minimum. We've got some clients as you'll see later on that have more than three, but these, this is where the numbers start to work is when you have three of these. So, we are a better way funding we're out of denver colorado and a better way funding and its associates uh we've got several different funds and we've done over 400 loans throughout the last few years for over 250 million dollars we've been helping operators become owners and helping owner operators expand and we've been doing this since 2009 so it's been a while myself uh, i'm a serial entrepreneur I've been that since 87. Uh, before I got involved in real estate, I had created and done about 18 companies over 30 years. And I got started in real estate investing in 2014. Was attracted to the uh, assisted living space because of the combination of business and real estate. And when I started investing, my mom said, hey, I'd like to invest in assisted living. So when Gene came to town with his uh classes that really caught my attention and this is what i decided i wanted to do i've had experience with over 40 million dollars of deals since i got involved and i got involved in the assisted living in 2016. i started a group in the denver area called the denver association of assisted living residences on meetup we now have over 600 members i joined a better way realty in 2018 and since then i've done 26 of these assisted living transactions I'm also a member of the International Business Brokers Association, and I'm a certified business inter intermediary. I just got that designation in December of uh, last year, something I worked on for two years, so I'm pretty proud of that. So let's talk a little bit about the challenges of expansion. Well, to start with, you need lots of upfront capital when you're looking to expand your business, and that's gonna be typically 10 to 15% for an SBA loan. Then on top of that, you need to have working capital. SBA always wants to see that you have money in the bank. And they're gonna be looking for minimum of that two months of expenses so that you can make sure that you can pay your bills if nothing came in. That usually doesn't happen, but still, they wanna see that money in the bank. And then X, SBA has maximums and their maximum right now is 5 million bucks. So you could do a few loans with them, but um, they can be, uh, there's some drawbacks to do in SBA. We'll talk about that later. All in all, the cash needed when you're doing something like this could be at least $200,000 when you're getting to, uh, and that's per house, to expand your business. I wanted to show you a few of the case studies of some of these projects that we've done. So I'm not going to put names on these, so I just call them operator one, two, and so on and so forth. This particular operator had one eight bed RAL facility and he got a letter from me telling him what we did. He called me up and said, 
you're a godsend. I can't believe this. So we went out and helped them purchase a 14 bed facility. This is this is the 14 bed. It's a really nice property. And then after that, we went out and picked up a 12 bed facility for him as well. So we got a total of 26 beds added to his eight bed. Now he's got his three pack. He's doing really well. So he's looking for a bigger facility. We're on the hunt right now for a 50 bed facility for him. Total deal for those two was $1.5 million. The next operator, um, they had, uh, let's see, this was a new one. She didn't have any experience in the RAL, but she did have some experience in healthcare. So we helped her find and acquire two um, RALs that were eight beds each. And I think that says a total of 20 beds. There was an upside where they could add two rooms or two beds to each of these houses. So they went from eight to six, uh, 16 up to 20. And that total deal was 1.45 million for those two houses. And you can see it's a pretty nice house. The next operator had one home and she did brain injury and she was looking to expand. So we found two houses. Now these houses were not, they had been REL homes, but the operator had uh, left them uh, and we picked them up from the owner. There was a total of 16 beds on these two homes. This is, uh, well, they both were pretty nice, but this was probably the nicer of them. That whole deal was 1.3 million. The next operator we helped had four existing RL beds for a total of 92. And she had lease options that had expired on these, so she needed to do something with them. They were looking to uh, either renew the lease or take her out of the, of the deal. So we came in and we purchased the houses for her and renewed her lease option. Now she's got a new lease option with five years to go before she has to do anything with it. And uh, we added about $400,000 of improvements. In that, we also added one more 10 bed. This is the 10 bed, it's still under construction. You can see the dumpster off on the side. So when that's finished up, which we're really close to getting the CO on that, she'll have a total of 102 beds um, and be in that deal for $4 million. Next operator, this is a, a really interesting property. You can see on the right-hand side, they've got a really nice garden there. This was an eight bed facility on a double lot. And the operator saw a real opportunity here and her husband was a construction guy. So what they decided to do was buy this and double the size of this facility. So they took out the garden and built basically a, another addition to this thing that's about the same size as the original house, brought it all the way up to 16 beds. Uh, they did move the garden, so there's still a garden there and it's a beautiful, beautiful property. So they went from eight beds to 16 beds. We bought this property for a million bucks, actually is a million 36. And then we put another $700,000 into that addition. Total deal on this one is 1.7 mil. And that's a 16 bed private pay facility. It's again, just a beautiful property that she has. This is a property down in Pueblo, Colorado. And the operator that purchased this already had two homes that um, he had set up for battered women and he wanted to get into the assisted living. So we helped him buy two of them. One was a, an eight bed that had um, actually been increased the capacity up to 10. And then this one was a 14 bed uh, MI home, that's a mental illness. So the two levels on this house worked okay because residents in that were able to handle the stairs. Interesting thing about this particular house though, is if you can see this house, it's to the left of it. He leased this house and he leased another one down the block. And in Colorado, you have a maximum of two people that you can put in a house without a license. So what he did is he leased these houses to veterans and the leases on the houses, he was paying $700 a month for the leases. And he was charging Oh, I think it was $2,000 a month for uh, per room. So he was getting four grand out of these um, 
these houses that he was paying $1,400 for. That was a great boost to his bottom line. It didn't take any labor for him to do. Um, all they did was cook and let the people come over and, and eat at his, uh, his main house. So that's a really interesting business model that he had. I, I think what he should do is buy every house on the block <laughs> and do that. Uh, next operator, um, he had two RALs and one under construction when we started working with them. And a great operator, you know, these people are top notch. It's a husband wife team. And we happen to have four RALs that were empty at the time because the operator that was in them had not succeeded. She did not go to Jean's course and didn't know what she was doing. So here we are sitting on these, these four RALs, 52 beds. And I thought this would guy, this team would be a, a great uh, couple to introduce this project to. So we did. And they picked up those for 5.4 million. Then currently, that was a few years ago. They've done a great job with that. And now they're under contract with another one, a 15 bed, that uh, is gonna be 1.3 million total. And that's actually something we're picking up for, oh, a million bucks. And we're putting another 300,000 into it because it's currently an eight bed and we're gonna take it up to 15. And then we also have this facility here, which is a 58 bed. And it's partial independent living and partial assisted living. And that one we have under contract right now for 8.3 million. So this guy and this, this team, this husband and wife team have done such a fantastic job that we're comfortable spending another almost $10 million with them to um, help them grow their business. So total, they've got 125 beds that we've supplied, they have other assisted livings. I think they're up to nine right now, plus the two that are coming. And we're in to the deal with them for about $15 million. I believe that they're going to be exercising their option on the 52 bed uh, within this year. So those are some examples that I wanted to show you. And again, these examples are of people that are up and running or looking to get into maybe a little bit bigger. Um, that's where our program really works well. So let's take a look at some of these um, bullet points of why you might consider our program. For one, we're typically gonna be less money down than getting a bank loan. Some of these operators, if they're uh, really good operators and we have, we're comfortable with them, they've got decent credit, and you know, we've done some of those deals at 5% down, we've done some of those deals at 0% down. So I think that $8.5 million deal, I don't think we're asking any money down for that particular operator. So that saves him $850,000 on the front side. That's money he can use as working capital to keep his business strong. Um, our programs do serve as a bridge to ownership. You know, there's some great programs out there with HUD that, where you can get like 4% financing for 40 years, but it takes a while to get to there. and. I think you have to have a minimum of $5 million. So we're kind of bridged to get to that point. You can use our program, get five, $10 million worth of property, and then have them come in and take us out and get that really low rate. If you're uh, utilizing our program, you've got a good bank, uh, a good record with us. So when you go to the bank and you're showing them, hey, we've been paying $10,000 a month for our lease, and now we want to buy it out and it's going to cost us maybe $8,000 a month. Bank's going to look at that and realize, you know, they've got a track record and they're able to pay the 10 grand. So that $8,000 a month lease or purchase, that's pretty easy to do because you're actually getting more cash flow. You're going to get experience as a person in charge. So if you, you're just getting started and you end up buying one or two of these and you need to have that experience for SBA, that, uh, that experience is important. They're usually looking for one to two years of experience there. You get to improve the operation and then you get the sweat equity to show the bank. We fix that price in the future, we fix it for today. And I'll show you that example, but you get all the appreciation that happens from today to the time that you exercise that option. And we have a flexible time to exercise that option. 
uh, you know, we set it at three years, but it doesn't have to be three. It could be five years. We set that lease at five years, so you have that that wiggle room in there. And you know what? If you can't exercise the lease in five years, or you choose not to, as many operators choose not to, because they'd rather buy more properties than spend the money on a uh, uh, on exercising the option, we'll just uh, renew that lease and do it again. So if you need capital to expand and you own a house already, our program might work for you that way. We can come in and actually buy that house, give you the capital, now you can expand, and again, you have that option to buy it back from us in the future. If we were to compare the benefits, we have this chart on our website. I think it's a nice little comparison. We'll just kind of run through some of it. If you're using a conventional lender, you're going to get a quick decision. If you're using SBA, that could take four months, five months, six months before you actually have that decision. If you're using us, you're going to get a pretty quick decision. Uh, low down payment, we don't usually see that with conventional. They're usually asking for 30% down. SBA, I've seen them as low as 10%. I think they're at 15 now. With us, uh, it is 5, 10%. Uh, and again, like I had stated, if you've got a track record with us, we've got a relationship. We've done these deals for zero down. Great credit. Well, it's a, a bank's going to look at that and they're going to they're going to wonder, you know, can you make the loan? SBA is going to look at that as well. With us now, I'm not saying that a 500 credit is going to get the deal done, but you know, if you're uh, medium credit and the property's good. The credit's not as important as the property is. So it's not necessary to have great credit with us. We understand entrepreneurs, you know, things are tough. Sometimes things don't go as we expect, and sometimes we get behind, or sometimes we're over leveraged. All those things affect your credit credit. We understand that. We work with entrepreneurs all the time. Possible zero down, we won't see that with conventional. We won't see that with SBA. Like I stated, we have done that. Additional dollars for build out. We typically don't see that with a conventional lender. SBA might do that. And we definitely do that. Uh, flexible timeline. You know what? We're investors. We're flexible in everything in this deal. So timeline, of course. Experience not necessary. You know, with enough money with a conventional lender, you don't need experience. If you put 30, 40% down, they may not care. SBA, they usually care. They're looking for one to two years of experience. So that's pretty important. To us, it's not necessary. It helps a lot and it makes the deal stronger. Uh, on our side too, it's more about the, the property. Uh, if you can put more down, then experience is less necessary. It's not necessary. We've done deals with brand new operators. Again, it's all deal concentric. And a fixed purchase price. Well, we know with conventional, the price is fixed. SBA, the price is fixed. And with us, even though it's in the future, we fix that price. So you know exactly what it is today. This is not one of those leases where going into the future, hey, it's uh, going to go up a certain amount. Now, we can structure something like that. We're Again, we're flexible. And we might structure something like that if we were to uh, defer some payments or do something along those lines. We've worked out some interesting deals in the past. But in our, our standard program, it's fixed. Here's the flat rate. This is what you can expect to pay. So this is how it works. Typically, the uh, operator and the agent, and sometimes if you're out of state, you may be working with your local agent. But if you're trying to negotiate a business, I can help you with that. We work in tandem to help you find a suitable property. And then the operator provides a security deposit, and that's applied to the purchase. It's actually your option fee is another way we look at that. And then ABW comes in, we actually purchase the property and we procure the loan for it. Sometimes we buy in cash and refi. Sometimes we get a loan. Um, we usually do leverage our money because we're using investors money and we want to get the maximum out of that. So don't be surprised if we buy with cash that we, we bring in an appraiser and have it uh, appraised and use a bank to get some of that cash back out. And then the rent is 10% of the option price, less the down payment that you put down. And then you have the option to purchase that property in three to five years at that option price. So I'll show you an example. 
this is a, a pretty simple deal with some simple math. A 10 private room RAL, it's bound for a million bucks. And you know, that's a pretty common number for a 10 room. Purchase price is a million bucks. The fee is uh, anywhere from seven to 10%. And what makes that vary is if the uh, broker's getting paid me uh, by the other broker or if it's being paid out of the fee. So if we're working with a seller and the seller's gonna pay the broker fee, then it's gonna be on a lower side. If not, then we roll my fees into the deal. So now you got a total of 1.1 million and five to 10% down. We use 10% of this example. That's $110,000. Again, that's, um, that's always gonna vary depending on the credit, the experience, the deal. Uh, so just for the example, we're using that 10% just to see what it looks like and make these numbers kind of easy. So now you got a balance of 990,000. The lease is a 10% annual lease, so that's 99,000 a year. That works out to 8250 a month. Your option purchase price is 990,000. So you see, we make a little bit of money in the fees, we make a little money in the spread between the bank and um, the 10%. That's how we get paid. You guys get the opportunity to get in there for a little down. You have the strength of our buying power. So you know if you're if you're negotiating we've got the buying power you don't have to say we're going to uh, sba and i'll tell you from a business broker side if somebody's telling me they're going to sba i'm really questioning if this deal is going to go through so anytime you can come in with different financing than sba you're going to have leverage over the other buyers now that lease is a triple net lease so that means that the operator is still responsible for all the expenses including the tax and insurance so really the only other expense you have beside tax and insurance, it's gonna be maintenance, upkeep on the property. And really it's gonna be your property, so you wanna maintain it. And then um, again, the fees, they vary on the deal structure. It looks like I, I put that in there twice. <laughs> so um, you can see my stars and I, I guess I repeated that in the slide. So how do you apply? You go to uh, raleaseoptions.com you'll see a little box right there. Just put your info in there and send it to me. And we'll, we'll have a discussion and talk about what you're trying to do. Uh, there's a second page on that uh, RAL that asks for some information on the deal if you know what it is. Then we'll send you over a form 1003. This is just a standard uh, residential loan application. We just use this because it is standard. That will get you pre-qualified. So we bring this to the underwriter, we just get you pre-qualified. And then after we have you pre-qualified, if we're out shopping, um, then you know we don't worry about this other stuff. If we are already picked out some things and we wanna analyze the deal. So we've got a couple of pages of information that we're gonna look for um, you to provide on the deal itself. And that way we can kind of analyze and really see if it makes sense for you. So that's one of the services we'll offer you is to make sure that this deal makes sense. We don't want you getting into a deal that doesn't make sense and won't make you money because it's not going to help any of us. Last thing we want is the property back. We want to see you successful and grow your business. So that's basically it. Um, I probably was supposed to ask you for questions a couple of slides ago. <laughs> so. That's okay. We got some questions coming in already, but your your can you go back to what what your website is again? It's RAL lease option, right? Dot com. Yeah, there we go. Dot com. So Brantley, I just sent that over to you in the chat, but I'll also put it in the chat too. So here's the website to go to apply. So that's going to be a great way for you to connect directly with them and get the whole process started. Um, the first question, and you guys go ahead and type in questions now. The first question I have here says, we have great credit um, and one operating RAL home. Will you cross collateralize to other properties like the SBA did with us? We can, if, if that's what you would prefer to do. Um, the only thing we don't use as collateral is your primary residence. So we do not want to have any effect on where you live, but yes, we absolutely, we can cross collateralize, it may or may not be necessary, but that's an option. You know, we did a deal where the operator um, on one of the deals didn't really have the cash to put down, but had the um, equity in another property. So we can use that, uh, that equity as collateral 
Now they still it didn't reduce their price any because they didn't have cash to put down on it, but it did make the deal go through because we felt comfortable with the extra collateral. So yes, again, being investors, we're always looking at ways to make things happen. Perfect. All right, lots of questions coming in. So sorry if I don't get your question. I'm going to try and get through all of these. So let's see. Um, when does the rent payment start in the process? During construction or after operating? The rent, um, it actually starts during construction. So when we do the deal, the first payment is due. Now, with that said, we have done deals where we have deferred rent and rolled it to the backside or rolled it into the deal. Um, again, it depends on how much. Uh, collateral we have if we're comfortable with that so anything is possible I wouldn't say that you know it absolutely has to be the very first day but that's our standard um, that said hey we are creative if we have enough collateral in the deal we can defer it okay this is a this is a great one um, I currently have one RAL I lease the home currently can you help me purchase the home and expand it to create more beds Yes, that is what we had done with one of the operators that uh, I had showed you, the gal that had four of them, uh, and that was kind of her situation. So yes, we could come in, we could buy that property, we could expand it, like build out the garage, or if you need to do an extent, um, expansion on the exterior, uh, or just remodel it. Usually the garage conversion is uh, what we see is pretty typical. We'd wrap all that into the deal, um, and then, lease it back to you. And of course, you've got that option to buy it back from us in the future. Perfect. What about new construction? Do you guys, have you ever worked with a new construction option? We haven't done new construction yet. And the, the challenge there again is that, that payment and being able to um, cover that income for the period of time. And new construction can take a couple of years. Although I would suggest you look at modular construction, which can go a lot quicker. We just haven't done that yet, and we've tried to figure out how to do that. You know, um, it's probably best, and we've looked at this, to get a construction loan, and then we can be the takeout on the backside of that. So it's easier to get a construction loan if you can go to the bank and say, hey, we've got somebody that as soon as we're done, we're going to come in and pay for the whole thing. So then the bank looks at it a lot more favorably, rather than wonder, well, how are you going to get out of this construction loan when you're done? So that's probably where we fit in a little bit better is on that takeout side. And now a couple of people have asked this question. What about people starting their first REL? So, you know, that is possible and all it takes is more money, really. Um, so if you're starting your first AR, um, RAL and we find an existing business, then that's a great place to go because we know that things cash flowing already. So you'd make a pretty good candidate. If you've got decent credit and you have enough money for working capital when you get into that deal, we would do that. Um, if you're starting your first one and just doing a conversion, that's where it gets a little bit harder because uh, the risk factors go up significantly. And I always tell my clients, go buy an existing business for your very first one. And then if you want to expand, it's easier to expand because you already have cash flow and you've got, um, you've got employees that you can move over to that new one once you have it done and you have residents that you can automatically move into that one because you know filling that first or that uh, that home with the first resident is always a challenge nobody wants to be the first one all alone if you have an existing one and you you convert another one then i recommend you take two or three people from the first one and move them over to the, the new home hey Hey, how would you like to be as part of the new home? Oh yeah, a lot of them would want that. So now you've got two or three people in there, it's easier to fill, and you've got two or three vacancies on your other one, again, easier to fill. Both of those are easier to fill than an empty home. And with employees, you have the same thing. You know, Employees are always a challenge. If you can slide employees from one business over to the other property, that's a lot easier than trying to hire new. So my recommendation always for new, is if you can find an existing business, buy that first and then start building your others. All right. What about leads for RAL homes that are currently for sale? Do you guys get leads on those since you've been in the business for a while now? Yes, I, I do get leads on those. 
So uh, the, the question is, are the leads I'm getting going to be in your area? Uh, that's always, you know, we can, we can look, but because of what I do, I get leads all the time and I have uh, connections to the resources that, you know, they're for sale and on the market, usually we can find them. And if we're looking in an area and we've got a strong client, then maybe we send out some letters. So that's another way that we can do it. Yeah, because Byrne, you've been in the real estate business a long time. So this is just finding leads the same way you would find any other real estate leads. You just have experience in both industries. Yeah, it's a little more challenging with businesses because usually they're a little bit confidential. But, you know, being a business broker as well, I've got access to the uh, the channels where where they're put on and not necessarily on the market, but on the market to brokers. All right, and so this goes back to a specific example that you made. So in the example given with a balance of $990,000, what would the purchase price be? Okay, let me go ahead and get to that. Sorry, I'm going the wrong direction. Okay, so here's how we would show the bank. All right, so the balance is 990,000. Now your option to purchase is for 990, but when we go to the bank, we're gonna tell the bank the purchase is 1.1 million and they have 10% down already. So from the bank's perspective, it's a $1.1 million deal and they've got 10% down already. What are they asking down? If it's SBA, it may be 10%. So you've already got your money down on the deal. If they're at uh, 15 or 20%, then you just have to make up that difference. But what we're showing the bank is the total purchase is 1.1 and that's the purchase price. You already have 110,000 down. So, you know, we credit all of this toward the purchase. But your option purchase price at that point on the paper is $990. All right. Hope that and makes so, sense. Yeah, absolutely. What is the best way to buy their first turnkey REL? So I know you said there were some stipulations related to SBA loans, but everyone's asking if you have products for first time buyers that are buying a turnkey REL. So, um, and, and again, we do like people that do that. And, uh, if you've got decent credit and the money to put down on that, let's just find the deal and then let's figure out what it's really worth because, you know, uh, entrepreneurs, operators sometimes have a, a figure in mind that they would sell it for, but it may not be what it's worth. So we want to run those numbers and make sure that the deal would make sense and that you're going to make money on the deal. And then we go and offer them something, you know, and if we're a, a cash buyer or have the strength to be able to close with cash, we might be able to get that at a reasonable number. And, you know, we're backing you up in that case. So, you know, it, it helps to have our experience in this so that we can analyze that deal, make sure it makes sense, and then make an offer that would make sense to the uh, seller as well, where, you know, they're not um, getting gypped on the deal, they're getting a fair market value for the deal, and you guys are getting a fair market value for the deal as well. So, you know, I love helping new operators. Uh, I, I, I like helping you find and buy those, those RALs. Again, as an existing business, it just makes so much more sense um, from our perspective than putting you under the stress of a startup. All right, this is a great question. And if you do the assessment on the deal and the deal doesn't go through, is there a fee for your assessment on that? No, no, we don't charge you. You know, again, we're we're here to help. All right, and then here we go. Let's see. Sorry, there's so many questions coming in, guys. I will try and get to all your questions. Can you share the valuation method that you use for the business? I can try to explain it. Um, so that, might, that might need a longer conversation. If if you're reaching out to Vern, that might need a longer conversation. But maybe if you could try and summarize it, Vern. I'll I'll try to summarize it. I have comps from across the nation. I have uh, in, in Colorado. I have comps from Colorado. Um, I look at it on a, a basically a three uh, tiered level, and then I weight all of those tiers 
to try to come up with what I think is the most probable selling price. So it's based on, most of it's based on comps. There are some multipliers that are involved in that as well. So we're looking at the income, we're looking at the discretionary earnings, we're looking at the property itself, and a, a combination of all those things is how I value the properties. Perfect. So the next question says, how long do you have to exercise the option? You have, okay, so you can exercise the option after three years, and the lease goes for five years. If you have not exercised the option by the time the lease is up, then what we're going to do is basically renew that lease. Now, because we get a loan and the loans we get on these because they're commercial loans typically are seven year loans. So we wanna at that five year mark are in two years that loan is called due. So that's the time we wanna go back and say, okay, where, where are we going with this property? If you wanna renew the lease, we, we have to go out and renew the loan. If the rates have gone up, um, from today in five years, six years, the commercial rate goes up a half a point, then we're probably going to pass that expense on to you in the new lease. Um, we're not looking to make any more than our 10%, but you know it depends on the rates. So if the rates go up, then that will be passed along to you. If the rates go down, maybe the loan will go down for the lease. You know, we have seen situations where we've actually lowered the lease. I doubt the rates are going to get much lower than what they are today, though. Yeah, rates are amazing right now. That's why the real estate market is amazing right now. So, a couple questions. Does the home slash facility have to be licensed type A slash B for a deal to be considered? Um, being in Colorado, I'm not sure what the difference is with an A or a B, but um, I think I would say most likely no. What we're going to be basing our deal on is will it produce enough income to make the lease? So if, if um, and, and again, not knowing what an A or B is, but if like a B is a memory care and an A is assisted living, um, you know, as long as it's going to produce the income to meet the, uh, the lease payments, and you know, we've done uh, memory care, We've done assisted living, we've done mental illness, we've done brain injury, we've done sober living homes. So I don't know that A or B is going to matter much to us. I'm curious what that is though. Yeah, and every state's different, right, you guys? So you're you're gonna have to deal with different varying licensures and things like that, depending on where you're located, and that'll all come up during the process. But mainly here, what we're talking about is just the real estate and the and the purchase price of that real estate. Okay, what about, I think you just talked about this, the way you use, how you, how you get your comps. So you're going off of previous projects that you've done and uh, existing projects in the area, correct? Yes, um, for the real estate itself, that's what we're gonna look at. For the business, um, my, my comps crum, come from nationwide. On the business because that's kind of how uh, all of the businesses are are valued is you know what have they sold for across the country uh, but for the real estate we have to look at you know what's local and um, it, again it's a couple of different ways one of the ways that we look at it is what's the cost of the house what's the cost of the improvements so um, typically you know what I like to say to my sellers is a buyer is not going to pay more for this house the real estate, uh, then they will pay if they can go across the street or down the block and buy the same house and get to the same improvements. So if if the house costs 550 and there's 150,000 of improvements, as an assisted living, it's that house is not going to be worth more than the 700,000. Because why wouldn't we just go down the street and start with new? Perfect. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you guys, um, Vern, if you can switch back to your um, the website for them to fill out an application and actually have a conversation with you. Otherwise, I'm going to send out Vern's information. Vern, is the Grand Avenue email good to send them to reach out to you? Yep, that one or by assisted living, either one of those okay. would 
Perfect. I'll send it to the by assisted living. Okay. So I will send Vern's information out tomorrow. Also, this REO lease option website, you guys have this right here. This will get you straight to him as well. If you have additional questions after this web this webinar, then you can reach out to him right now. Um, otherwise. Yeah, so there's just more questions coming in, guys, and I and I think that we will, a lot of these are questions that'll be great for you to talk to Vern about directly. Some of them are more specific than others, so I'll just give you guys that. I'll go through a whole story talking about some of these right here. So you guys are great. I love your interaction. This is awesome. Um, but I think you'd be best to reach out to Vern directly to talk about your projects and what you're looking to do. So Vern, thank you so much for being here tonight. This is always awesome and people are very intrigued by what you guys are doing and I can't wait to see you guys flourish by doing this together. Terrific, well, thank you for the opportunity, Molly. It's great to, to get to present this to everyone and I hope I can help some people expand their business and become successful. Absolutely, everyone, you guys have a great night and I will be talking to you soon, Vern. Have a great evening. Okay, thank you.